The ultimate guide to grading Birmingham, Alabama neighborhoods. That's the topic of today's show. Let's dive in. Hey investors, welcome to another episode of the Ask James Wise Show. Today's show is very special because we are going to be talking about the Birmingham, Alabama market. Now ever since I put out the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, you guys have been asking me to produce guides for other neighborhoods. You guys have been sending me emails or making YouTube comments or hitting me up on Instagram or bigger pockets like, hey James, grade this neighborhood, grade this neighborhood, give us an ultimate guide for this neighborhood. So I went ahead and started doing that. Now, I am an expert in Cleveland, Ohio. I am the Cleveland, Ohio real estate expert. You wanna talk about rental properties in the Cleveland, Ohio market? I've got all of your answers. Now, Holton Wise, we provide you guys education, deals, opportunities on many of the other popular rental markets or turnkey markets, however you wanna call it. But when we do that in markets outside of Cleveland, we need to partner with other local companies who are physically on the ground in those markets. So what I did to create this ultimate guide to grading Birmingham, Alabama neighborhoods is I contacted Maureen McCann from Spartan Invest. You see Spartan Invest, those are our ground partners in the Birmingham, Alabama market. So let's take a look at my conversation with Maureen about the neighborhoods in Birmingham, Alabama. So Maureen, I'm looking over all of the data that your team sent over to me because, you know, as everyone knows, everyone who watches Holton Weiss TV, you guys are all aware that uh, Holton Weiss, you know, we are experts in the Cleveland market, top to bottom, we do it all. Um, But I have been, you know, having investors come to me like, hey, we want to know about this market. We want to know about that market. So I've gone out and I've partnered with other teams in various markets. And you guys at Spartan, you guys were, in my opinion, the cream of the crop. You guys were doing the best stuff down there. And uh, I wanted to make the ultimate guide to Birmingham, ultimate guide to grading Birmingham neighborhoods, just like the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. But I, of course, don't have the, the market knowledge to do that on my own. So I brought you in. You and your team and myself, we've been working for a week or two now to just compile all this data. And when I got some of the data, I had originally thought that you guys had made a mistake uh, providing me this data. Um, So I fact-checked you guys. I fact-checked it. Uh, You guys actually have property tax rates that are more or less in almost 90% of the neighborhoods you guys invest in. You guys have property tax rates, which are 0.65%. Now, up here in Cleveland, what we primarily see, we're in the 2.5% to 3% range. So you guys are 0.65%. And I even saw a couple that were at 0.51 and one that was at 0.33%. That's accurate, right? You guys didn't screw that up, right? No, we did not screw that up 100%. And I love that you are fact-checking and uh, doing your due diligence so that your audience and your, your fans and your listeners can believe what it is that you tell them. So I applaud you for that. Yes, you're right. There was no typo. They are the lowest taxes in the nation, kind of running neck and neck with Mississippi. I'm not sure who's the winner, Mississippi or us, but man, we're the lowest, and so we're good. Okay. The biggest thing I do, though, when I, when I teach investors about real estate, every single thing that you do you know, there's always going to be a pro to it and there's going to be a con. It's not like that there's just one special magical neighborhood in the world that's just better than everything else, right? Being objective, we have to admit that everything has a pro and a con. So high property taxes, they're a bummer, but the reason for those taxes is so the city can fund its infrastructure and keep things moving. That makes our schools nicer, which makes our neighborhoods nicer, which typically leads to us having nicer tenants, which should lead to a higher ROI in our pocket. So with your property tax rates being like uh, something I've never really seen before, where is the money coming from uh, to, to fund infrastructure in the Birmingham market? Great question. It's really two sources. We, uh, the sale of the state sales tax is higher. It's near 10% in Birmingham. So they're going to find the money to uh, any state's going to find the money, whether it's through property taxes or state taxes, to get the money they need for the schools and the roads and the fire departments, et cetera, uh, for all those public services. 
Uh, but the other thing that's really important for your investors to know is the industries that are in Birmingham uh, really do help the tax basis. Um, and what's been, and to share a quick little story, if I may. So when my business partners asked me to come to Birmingham for the first time and to see what they were doing there, and they wanted to offer me a position to come and join them to co-found this company called Spartan Invest. Now at the time, I had been for the first five years of my career, been selling turnkey rental properties in Memphis and then Dallas and Houston. So when they invited me to Birmingham, I remember getting on the flight like with my eye rolling like, oh God, what the hell is in Birmingham, Alabama? And why the hell am I wasting my time getting on a flight to go? But I'm a curious type. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go do it. And when I got there, here's the thing. I'm going to make a long story, not longer, but shorter for your listeners, is when I got there, I realized that between the neighborhoods, the quality of the product, the the what I saw happening around from a revitalization, redevelopment, it wasn't a city that was struggling and trying to turn around. It was a city that already had turned around. And the way that it did it was through... Uh, very aggressive state, local, and government officials. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you'll also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and Rent Tech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Holton Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to holtonwise.com today. So the, uh, so when Clayton and Lindsay invited me to come to Birmingham, I roll, it's like, oh my God, why am I going to this armpit of a place? And that was in my mind. So I don't even know why it was there or how it even got there. It just was there. Probably like a lot of in your own listeners' minds, when you say Birmingham, Alabama, it's not like you go, oh my God, that's like sunny San Diego. I got to go there. I got to invest there, right? That's not what goes through people's minds when you hear about Birmingham, Alabama, similarly to mine. So that was in 2012 when I went to go visit them. And what I saw, honestly, James, is that the, the neighborhoods, the people, the city itself, the revitalization effort, it wasn't... It wasn't a city trying to turn around. It already did. It, it had already made the turn. Like if you were looking at a graph, you know, it's like city was declining, but it's like here when I got to it, it was like on the upswing. And what you see and, and what you see now today is the result of very aggressive, uh, very fierce state, local, and government officials that were going out overseas looking for foreign investment capital because what they need to revitalize your city is jobs. And if they couldn't find them domestically, they were hell bent on getting on planes with creative business tax incentives to get these companies, billion dollar companies, Toyota, Mazda, Honda, uh, Mercedes Benz, uh, uh, Hyundai, to get these manufacturing companies, billion dollar plants in the United States, in Birmingham, Alabama, because they needed the jobs. They needed the men, they needed the job to hire their local people so they can get this economy rebounding. And they were fierce in their pursuit and they made it happen. And not only that, so they, they got these billion dollar contracts. These people got their, you know, these auto manufacturing plants are here to stay for a very, very long time. Now, and I say now, but I guess I mean from three years ago to now, they've been vigorously focusing on tech. They want the next big tech giant to come out of Birmingham, Alabama. And so if you've ever heard of companies like Airbnb, Reddit, and Dropbox, these are companies that came that were developed from the think tanks, or these they're called technology incubators that uh, cross collaborate space and help them um, create these new tech ideas. And so, Innovation Depot, now called the Innovation District, is a building in Birmingham that has a currently 119 new startups, all in tech, focused on developing the next big technology company. Um, out of Birmingham. So, you know, Amazon, 
set up a distribution facility in Bessemer, that's in uh, Alabama. DC Blocks just set up their headquarters, another high-tech cloud debt IT company. Uh, and then we have this thing called Birmingham Bound where the city officials have invited the CEOs, mostly of Silicon Valley, they, they call it Birmingham Bound because they want to be able to show and highlight and showcase what Birmingham can offer uh, any tech company that wants to open satellite operations or move their headquarters there. Um, and there's this, uh, it's called talent acquisition, talent optimization, talent acceleration programs where the city will actually give the tech company money to go out and find the talent, move the talent here, train the talent, get them into boot camps, webinars, things like that. Um, to help them elevate through the ranks of the, the company as long as the company stays in Birmingham, Alabama. That's the catch, right? We'll give you some money for, for all those, that talent acquisition optimization, but you got to promise to stay and keep the job here. So that's what the city is doing right now. That, that's very smart. That's uh, very, very aggressive governing. I like that. That's something that if you're an investor, guys, as investors, you know, we typically can't change the rules of the game. But what we can do is step back, take a look at what the rules are, and position ourselves in the best place uh, to take advantage of them, more or less. And what I like is Birmingham is generating all of its income uh, from it appears. We got some sales tax, but then obviously a lot of employment tax, not so much property tax. So if I'm an investor looking nationwide for a market, that is a huge plus to me. Now, we're going to go to a quick word from our sponsor of today's show, and then we are going to get into Maureen's thoughts on every single neighborhood in Birmingham, the really nice stuff, the A-class stuff where all the people that live there are owner occupied. We're going to talk about their sweet spot in the B2C markets, and then we're even going to talk about some stuff Maureen doesn't really like to mess with, that DNF stuff, that stuff that you guys see all the time on my Tenants from Hell show. Stay tuned. <laughs> Discount Property Warehouse, founded by real estate visionary Robert Thiel, author of The Short-Term Retirement Program, is a complete turnkey solution for acquiring cash-flowing investment properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Our turnkey properties include a third-party home inspection, new HVAC with 10-year warranties, new dimensional roofs, competitive price-to-rent ratios, discounted property insurance, in-house property management, private financing, and much more. At Discount Property Warehouse, we have a staff of licensed agents standing by, ready to assist you with every aspect of the process. Call us today or visit us online at discountpropertywarehouse.com. All right, guys, welcome back. Now it's time to get into the meat. Let's get into these grades. That's what you guys are here for. That's what the Ultimate Guide series is all about. Right now, we are grading the Birmingham, Alabama market. We're sitting with one of the co-founders of Spartan Invest, Maureen McCann. Maureen, so like, you know, we have A to F scale, right? If all things were equal, everybody would probably want to invest in the F-class neighborhoods because the rent to price ratio is the best. But you and I, seasoned professionals, we are aware that there are differences. Now, we're going to go through all of the neighborhoods. Um, let's start with the A-class neighborhood. In my experience, we don't deal with a lot of A-class stuff because a lot of investors, they're not really attracted to going to new markets to buy A-class stuff because these are neighborhoods that are primarily owner-occupied, high-income earners. Uh, they don't really pencil out from a cash flow perspective. And if folks really wanted those types of numbers and really stable assets, they could just stay home in their own home markets um, I understand that you guys don't do much in those neighborhoods, but you do do a little bit of new construction. So if you could kind of just explain to me what people can expect when they're in the A-class neighborhoods in Birmingham. Yeah, so the, the, we just recently started doing some new construction. We've had some demand from investors asking us for new construction. These are an A-class neighborhood. We've got five new bills, brand new construction in Odenville. It's a, it's a suburb way, uh, outside of Birmingham. Um, right near the Lincoln plant, the, the Honda, the Honda manufacturing plant. It's one of those neighborhoods where, you know, it's wooded, great lots, beautiful views. You know, it's, it's so low risk, but it's also a lower return. So you do have a class of investors that that's what they like. I mean, there's some investors that get hung up on the aesthetics. They want the new, they want the pretty, they want the landscape. And we have that for them, but that's not the majority. The majority really like the B and C class neighborhoods where the price points are 
typically below 100,000. We we operate in the 80 to 120,000 range. Um, they typically like those B to C because lower price point, higher cash flow, moderate risk, not low risk and not super super high risk when on the lower price stuff. So thing is, you just gotta find you gotta have offerings that appeal to each investor's risk tolerance, and so that's what we do. Uh, based on what you're telling me, outside of your new construction. Uh, which I assume that's probably a relatively small portion of your portfolio. Would you say that uh, that would probably be like 80% of your investor demand and portfolio would probably be playing in what we do up here would be the B and the C markets? 100%. Yes. You're okay, cool. So we'll kind of just gloss through like a class, most investors from California, you guys aren't coming halfway across the country uh, to invest in an A class neighborhood in Birmingham. Cause that's primarily owner occupied. That is pretty cool. You guys are doing new construction. We don't see a lot of turnkey providers doing that in a lot of our markets. I do like that. But what I'd really like to focus on would be your, your B and your C market. Because uh, when investors, you know, they reach out to me or they're watching my show, they're like, hey, man, we want more information on these markets. And, and what they're always drawn to is these B and the C markets. And like what you guys have here with this, this incredibly low tax rate, I can't, I can't talk about that enough. Um, what type of experience can an investor expect if they're trying to buy something in the B class neighborhoods in Birmingham? Like what types of pricing, rents, tenant profile, like what are they going to experience when they go and they go into the B class neighborhoods? Yeah, this is easy. So you've got uh, our B class are usually the price points are between 90 and 120,000. And for a lot of those California uh, based uh, investors are probably just laughing at that because that's not something that could even come close to in California. Hence the reason there is no turnkey operators in California. Um, point. Thank you. So that 90 to 120 is really, is really appealing to um, the investor who wants to get into that B class neighborhood. These are rents you're looking at 875 to 1200. The profile usually is, you know, these are just working class folks. They're usually couples, some married, some not married. A lot of them just have kids. They're looking for an area where they can have lots of land. So there's big lots in Birmingham. So it's very, it's very common to sell property that has a half acre to an acre lot. No, no lie. Okay. <laughs> if it's smaller, they don't really like it. They like the big lots because they've got their dogs and their kids and their barbecues and they're watching football on the weekends, right? So this is this is their lifestyle. So they want a house, a rental property that's conducive to their lifestyle. And so uh, these are again middle these are working class folks they're usually in the service industry no evictions no convictions they are just the the nine to fivers they get up they work uh monday through friday they work overtime they enjoy their weekend they get back up monday morning and they go back to work and they wash rinse and repeat day in and day out and it's a great rental pool for our investors who are looking for someone to consistently pay that down uh, the principal while giving them the cash flow and the tax benefits that they get from owning rental property. Okay. And I'm looking over the data provided to me by your team. Um, and it looks like the majority of your B class neighborhoods, it looks like you guys have, you know, household incomes in the 50 or $60,000 range. So, you know, that does to me that that really highlights that these are, these are stable tenants. Um, but you know, when investors, they come to markets like uh, your market or my market or Memphis or something like that. You know, I, I see often that they're like chasing those high returns, those high cash flow numbers. Mm -hmm. So if we go down a level, if we go to the C class uh, properties that you guys have, now the income drops. It looks like we have incomes in like the thirty to forty thousand dollar range. What 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 kind of experience would investors have in the C class neighborhoods versus those B class neighborhoods? Excellent question. You're going to have higher risk with your C, right? Okay. There's a different mindset, a different mentality. You've got, you may have two working folks in the B. You may just have a single person, maybe a single mom, single father with kids, you know, who is getting out of an apartment because they don't want to, they want space so they can afford, you know, rent of say $750, $850. And they, it gets them out of an apartment into a place, uh, into a house where they've got a front yard, backyard, kids can play, everyone can have their space and like life is blissful, but it comes with inherently with a little bit more risk, right? If that person comes, loses their job or their hours are reduced or um, God forbid an illness or something happens and they're disabled, then you have just higher risk because you don't have someone else to support uh, the household. So you do, what I've seen is that when you have your lower price point, it's, and it's very attractive, I get what you're saying. I think this is really important for 
your viewers is that yes, you get lured in when you're when you're looking at this and you're seeing the return on paper. And you're like, wow. I can get later you know, 19% return on my money if I go with this lower price property. Now I get 13%, you know, uh, on this uh, B class neighborhood and a higher price property. Ah, you know, you're kind of weighing your the 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 risk reward. You're going to have probably look, most likely more reward with the higher price property, higher rent, uh, presumably more stable couple renters versus someone in a lower price point, lower rent. Um, you know, C category because there's just, there's, you know, there's a reason they can't afford a higher rent. So they have Absolutely. to get, they have to get what they can get. And, you know, I've, I've leased enough properties to know, and I've heard the conversations where, you know, the family will say it'll be a, you know, a mom and dad and their kids and like the pre, the tween kids, you know, and you'll hear them say it's a three bedroom, one bath. And of course, the parents don't want to share a bathroom with the kids and the kids don't want to share a bathroom with the parents. But the thing is, the reason that they're in that house in the first place looking at it is because what they can afford. If they could afford the three, two, they would have been looking at the three, two, but they can't. So it's just, you know, it's just, you just have to look at and think about the mindset of someone that can rent a property for 750 and the mindset of someone that can rent a property for $1,000 a month. It's just different. Okay. And to that point, to, to just so, so I'm on the same page with you. Now, if, if an investor wanted to get themselves one of those tenants, you know, making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, there it's going to cost them. They're going to have to pay for that. It's going to be between about ninety-five and one hundred twenty k. But what that'll deliver to them is a tenant paying up to about twelve hundred bucks a month in rent. But Correct. for those investors who are a little bit more uh, risque, so to speak, <laughs> that want to dive into your C class market. Um, what uh, what types of pricing can they expect? You're looking at more eighty to eighty five thousand. Okay. Property. We don't do too many C. I would say that we don't. It's not our it's not our bread and butter. We have a lot of demand for that that more you know working class safer niche. That's what makes people feel more comfortable. Um, but I do have some investors that are have a higher risk tolerance and they want to do the lower end stuff. Sometimes they want to go so low end. I can't I can't provide what they're looking for. So I'll have to refer them. Somewhere, somewhere else. But for those that are have some higher level of risk tolerance, that eighty to eighty-five thousand is going to get them, you know, a two-bedroom, two-bath, maybe a three-bedroom, one-bath, um, in you know, a price point of eighty to eighty-five, and just in a neighborhood that is still safe, but aesthetically may not look as nice as, say, you know, a B or an A. Now, um, what would they be paying in rent in those eighty to eighty-five thousand dollars houses? You said seven fifty to what? Seven fifty to about eight twenty-five. I'd say. Okay, eight twenty-five. And then, as far as like uh, neighborhood aesthetics, right? Like, I, I'm presuming based on how you're describing it, um, if an investor was to Google search any random house that you presented them in a B-class neighborhood, and they were to go street by street over and over, would they see any board ups or uh, tear downs or anything of that nature? No, no board ups, no vacant lots, no burnouts, no, uh, you know, graffiti. You won't see any of that stuff. Like I love Google Earth because you can do the bird's eye view and then you can go down to the street view and that's what you're looking for. You want to see those things from an aerial view. Can you see any of that? No. Um, and the, and this, this is a really good, it just kind of came to me. This is a really good um, description of your B, which is you've got really nice homes on usually typically large flat lots that have, you know, half acre, quarter, well, quarter of acre, half acre, or an acre. So you've got houses that have really big yards. When you get to a C-class neighborhood, the houses are smaller, they're closer together, and you okay. see a lot more cars parked on the street because there's not too many space for driveways, you know? That's the difference, you know, from a, just a visual, like if, you were, if your audience was looking at Google Earth, they could easily tell the difference between a B-class neighborhood and a C by the spacing between the houses. It gets a lot crowded on the C, a lot more space on the B, more cars on the street on the C, less cars on the street on the B. That's a really good pro tip out there, guys, because I, I know 
a lot of you guys, you're having deals just pushed to you every which way. You got wholesalers here, realtors there. Everyone is trying to send out these performas that, you know, they're always trying to highlight the property in the best possible light. When you could actually get someone on the ground like Maureen, who's actually been in the trenches, deals with this stuff on a day in day basis, giving you guys nice pro tips like that, that you could do at home when you're doing your research. That's what I like to see. Now, when we get into the C-class neighborhood, Maureen, uh, outside of the fact that the houses are smaller, they're closer together, we have a lot more cars in the neighborhood, um, do we start to see any blight? Like, are there any board ups or any teardowns, burnouts, anything of that nature? It, do they show up in a C-class neighborhood? Um, not often, but it's when I, cause I do tours every single month. And so, uh, it's great because every time I go back, I never, I, it's, I'm seeing the house for the first time. Right? So I've got a bunch of investors with me and I'm like, you know, you kind of risk it cause you're like, Hey, we're just going to these addresses that I've never been to before because you have to go to what's renovated and vacant and available to view sure. and within reasonable driving distance. Uh, and so there's times where maybe not on that exact street, you don't see any of that, but maybe two or three streets over, you might see like there was one house I remember going to on Lawson and I kind of came the back way, didn't know I was coming the back way. And all of a sudden I parked, I kind of passed the garage. It was an auto mechanics garage. It had cars everywhere. And after I had just said, oh, you don't see any of this stuff in the neighborhood. So I'm like, oh, there's one. So it wasn't on the exact street where the house was. It was a couple of streets down. Cause again, like I said, I came the back way. So I think, you know, to be hundred percent fair, I think the likelihood is that it's possible. It's still not something that we see a lot of, but there are some houses that surprise me a couple of streets down, three streets down. You do see, you know, no, no burnouts or vacant lots. That that's, that's a big, you know, you're in a really rough neighborhood when you see that, but a guy that's got 10 cars parked on this front lawn. Yeah, I have seen that. Okay, so you'll start to see that stuff peppered in. And, you know, I feel like that makes a lot of sense because, uh, <clears throat> you know, doing this nationwide, like, you know, all these, these turnkey markets, they're all slightly different, but they all have some similarities. Like, you know, when we have B-class stuff up here in Cleveland, we don't see any burnouts or uh, any boarded up windows, anything of that nature. But, you know, once you start getting into the C-class area, those are going to be peppered in. Um, so I, I would uh, I would think... It, you probably do see a little bit of that in the sea, but it's by no means the norm. Now, I would assume it probably becomes the norm when we get to those DNF. And I think you touched on this earlier. You don't even really typically uh, sell investors or work with in the DNF neighborhoods. You guys kind of steer away from that. One hundred percent. That is not our risk tolerance. We don't. We're never going to send our crews, our leasing agents, anyone in an area that is dangerous to them. Or their safety so there are certain we have no fly zones there's strict no fly zones and you know it when you're in it <laughs> because you know it's you get that eerie feeling you know you're driving and you're going god boarded up home boarded up home boarded up home burnout vacant lot <laughs> stray dog graffiti everywhere you're like okay um but there are people honestly there are people that will sell you stuff in sure. those neighborhoods, and they'll sell it for twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars. They'll put a Section Eight tenant in there for whatever seven hundred, and they'll sell you a return of twenty five percent return on your money. And your eyeballs as an investor go, "Oh my God, that's so amazing! I want that." And then you have to dig a little bit deeper into: Are you going to get it? What are they going to do to the to? How are they going to treat the property? You know, if you've got a mindset occupying a rental property that is one of expectation and entitlement, I guess would be a good word. Um, they're in that situation for a reason. It's just because of their thinking, nothing's wrong with them. It's just, they've got a, their, their train of thought, their mindset is just a little bit different and that's okay. If you want to, if you have that risk tolerance, if you want to rent or you want to buy in those areas, go for it. I am not one to, to dissuade you from that. It's just not what we do. There are just areas that we don't go into because, um, they're just not safe. They're just not, they're really, it's really rough neighborhoods. I really, the, the coolest thing that you just said that like I, I, my eyes lit up when you said it, I, I love this because as uh, you know, you're a co-founder, you are a principal of Spartan. So, you know, you don't do everything, you don't do all the stuff day to day, but everything that happens in that company, the ultimate responsibility lies upon you and your other principal partners. Mm -hmm. And, I'm in the same position at Holton Wise. And what I really love that you said is it's not safe for your crew. 
uh, your crew has a hard time because, you know, we will sell people anything, A to F. Uh, we, we don't care what you want to buy. If you want to buy some burned out ghetto ass house, whatever, dude, I'll sell you a burned out ghetto house. I'm going to tell you it's a burned out ghetto house. Like, yo, bro, here's your house. It's fucked up. You want to buy it? Cool. I make money in the ghetto. I've made money in the ghetto. I used to work a lot more in the ghetto before uh, when we were getting started. Um, but we have since really gotten rid of the management aspect of the rough properties because of mainly what you said. It's, it's, it's actually about us trying to staff our companies. I think investors, sometimes they get stuck in those spreadsheets and yeah. they look at their spreadsheets in a vacuum and they forget that, hey man, there has to actually be real people on the other end making these things happen to put numbers in your spreadsheet. And you take a person like you, a person like me, we can't staff our companies if we're sending our teams into these neighborhoods all the time. Like guys will just quit. They will do that. That's, you know, that's what you run into. And uh, I think a lot of new investors, they, they don't ever think of that. They think, Oh, PM's 10%. It doesn't, they don't care what it is. And they think that uh, there'll be people on the other side just to manage their assets. So like when guys want to go into those neighborhoods, you know, I, I don't manage the really rough neighborhoods for third parties anymore. We tell them, Hey man, this is a rough property. Here's all the risk factors. You want to buy it? Cool. Uh, but you're going to have to figure out management on your own. And I tell people, I don't think those properties make sense for out-of-state investors. I think they only work for locals uh, who have built up their own teams and they're doing their own company. Like they are the property manager and everyone handling the, the on the ground stuff is their employee. It doesn't really make sense third party. And uh, I'm just really glad that, you know, you from several states away from me highlighted the exact same thing that I was thinking. Awesome. Good minds think alike there, James. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're pretty much more or less, you're, you guys are just not handling any of this DNF stuff. Just no danger. So you guys are really playing in that B to C area. Let's, let's stick to that. I got a couple questions. Sure. Some things that shot out to me, um, cause every market, you know, we have our similarities, but we also have differences. Now you said a lot of these, uh, B class neighborhoods, they have these really large yards. Mm -hmm. uh, is it common in your neighborhood, uh, for the landlord to cut the grass at these homes or are the tenants taking on that cost? That is tenant. Tenant okay. utilities and all lawn care. So the tenants, are they paying for uh, their own water and sewer, things of that nature too? Yes. Okay, see, that's very interesting. Cool. This is something I want you guys to take a look at. A lot of people, they're attracted to the Cleveland market. And uh, if we take a property that's priced at $120,000, $120,000 property in the Cleveland market, which many of my fans would know, you know, that property more or less is going to be renting for between maybe fifteen and $1,600. But there's a couple things to think about, guys, when you're comparing. Uh, make sure we're comparing apples to apples here. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay about $120K. You could probably get fifteen, sixteen hundred in rent. That's probably going to be a two-family property. You're going to have to pay for lawn care. You're also going to have to pay for water sewer, which on something like that will probably run you about one hundred fifty a month. If you took that one twenty and you spent it down in the Birmingham, Alabama market, your rent ratio is a little off. It's a little lower. Um, it's going to be about twelve hundred. So you lose a little off the top there, but you're making it up because your taxes uh, are uh, shit. Like five times less more or less and you don't have to worry about water and sewer or lawn so yeah. it's important guys that when you are looking at these properties you're looking at all of the properties you're analyzing your numbers you want to check the show notes below to see what neighborhood grade those properties are and then you're going to want to calculate your net return based off of the information provided to you today by Maureen. Because Maureen, she knows what she's doing, guys. She's got a big company. How many properties are you guys managing down there now? Oh, my gosh. Uh, we just crossed over 800. Over 800. And it's literally like you said about, what, 80 90% all in that B2C range, huh? Correct, yeah. Maureen, what about um, appliances, right? That's another... Uh, cost that landlords have, you know, whether or not you supply appliances is usually dictated by the neighborhood norms of that particular market. Do you guys need to supply appliances in these homes in these B and C class neighborhoods? Is there a difference between the two? Uh, what, what do you guys got with that? Excellent question. Yeah, we we're the we are of the mindset that the less phone calls we have to make to our investor asking them for money for a repair for something, the better. <laughs> So, because uh, they don't really like those phone calls saying, hey, your refrigerator just moved out with the tenant moving out. So we need, we need another $1,000 to put a new refrigerator in there. 
So in order to avoid making those phone calls, because I don't like conflict, I like to make people happy, I like to put money in investors' pockets, we uh, do not supply appliances in those uh, B and C class neighborhoods. And for that, really, it's very simple. It's we want to protect the investor's capital, mitigate any loss of that capital. And the best way to do that is to remove those items that could impede their cash flow um, or their earnings. So if I don't have to put appliances um, in a rental property because the state's not making me, it's not telling me I have to as a property manager, then I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have the tenant bring in their own washer, dryer, refrigerator, and yes, people, the stove. They have to bring it all. Okay, so just to clarify for everyone watching, uh, some unique differences between the Birmingham market and the Cleveland market. Number one, the taxes are going to be much lower. Number two, owners, you guys no longer need to worry about paying that water bill. If you're down in the Birmingham market, the tenants are going to pay that. Uh, we run a similar policy on the appliances up here, so that's similar. Now, when we go into the lower class stuff, uh, or bigger buildings, like bigger apartment buildings, we find that the tenant base isn't usually used to bringing their own appliances in. So you guys primarily play in that B2C. I know, Maureen, you don't like uh, going to the DDF because, you know, I mean, who does? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like in the DDF uh, stuff, in your experience, you know, being so intertwined in that market, do you see investors having to supply appliances to their tenant base in the DNF? Like I know when you're doing Section 8, it always helps to have the appliances. Um, what do you guys see in the DNF markets in uh, DNF neighborhoods in your market? Yeah, so I think you know this is I'm just kind of taking a shot in the dark here because I don't typically even do anything or even look in the, the DNF. Um, my guess is they probably do. Um, they may. I don't know. I mean, because I think in your, I, it's a stretch here, right? Because you know if you've got a lower, if you've got someone that can afford a lower rent, they're typically not lugging appliances, which are pretty expensive things to bring with them, right? So um, I'm just taking a shot. I don't know, honestly. Um, I only know my I've got my little tunnel vision, my B, C, sure. and my A. A, we put those appliances in, the stainless steel package, B and C, with no appliances whatsoever. And what happens in those, those ghetto fabulous areas, if they're supplied or not, no idea. Okay. I mean, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, for anybody out there who's never actually invested in a D and an F class neighborhood, just to help you paint a picture, guys, um, like, you know, what's common, like a common bedroom set uh, in a D and F class neighborhood is a mattress on the floor with a, a milk crate that was stolen from a local gas station as the bedside table. Um, so when those folks move, like you'll find that a lot of their clothes are typically kept in garbage bags, not actually uh, dressers. And Maureen's over there laughing at me because she avoids this stuff. Um, but that, I mean, that's, that's a very real reality guys. So when you're, when you're looking at Birmingham and you're looking at those properties and somebody sends you a performer and the property is $30,000 in it, it's got a section eight tenant in there for eight fifty. That's fine. If you're the right person, you could possibly make money on that. But just so you know, you're going to have to be actively involved and you're going to be dealing with people like that. There's going to be crime. There's going to be evictions. As Maureen said, evictions and convictions, you're going to see that type of stuff and you're going to have to get your hands dirty because, you know, one of the bigger names in this market, Spartan Invest, uh, they're not going to, I mean, Maureen, Maureen's laughing at me, guys, when I explain <laughs> that. They're not going to deal with that. As we talked about earlier, there are real people on the other side of those spreadsheets, guys. Um, so factor that stuff in. Who can you actually get to do the work? These are things you have to think about when you're deciding. And I'm not here, and Marie's not here to tell you, you got to buy B, you got to buy C. We are here to give you guys the information on your experience if you buy B, if you buy C, if you buy D, and you buy F. All right, special thanks to Maureen McCann and the rest of the folks over at Spartan Invest for helping us put together this ultimate guide, giving us all of that in-depth knowledge that you can only get from dealing with someone who's local and on the ground. Now, as we mentioned several times during the interview with Maureen, all of the information that we spoke about, including everything in the guide lettered, is in the show notes below. You're going to get the grades, the zip codes, the residential property tax rates, the medium household income, and the owner occupancy rate of that neighborhood. So all that is in the show notes below. Make sure you bookmark this video so you can refer back to it. And if you guys would like to start investing in Birmingham, I have all of the contact 
information for Spartan Invest in those show notes below. You guys can go ahead and reach out to Spartan Invest directly, see if they can help you build your portfolio down in the Birmingham, Alabama market. That's all I've got for you guys today. Before I let you get out of here, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button because here on Holton Wise TV, we are bringing you guys education, opportunities, and even tenants from hell content so you guys can get a full in-depth picture at everything you're going to deal with when you become a real estate investor. So if you could do us a favor as well and go ahead and hit that like button, let YouTube's algorithm know that you found a lot of value in watching this video. That would be great. As always, I'm James Wise from Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches, FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video just like this one to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.